Hi, my name is Christy Viscarello, and I want to take some time today to talk to you about Front Row Ed. It's a differentiated online math instruction program that I, that I implemented and piloted with my fifth grade students last year. Um, and seeing the growth and um, progress that my students made, I thought it would be extremely beneficial for um, the district to consider implementing this throughout our, all of our elementary and possibly middle school um, levels. So what is Front Row Ed? Front Row Ed is an online personalized math program that allows the students to learn and pace themselves at their independent levels. Um, teachers are given um, da data back that allows them to differentiate instruction, um, differentiate small group instruction, um, and it's Common Core aligned for grades kindergarten to eight, grade eight. So what does this allow the students to do? They work online. This year we implemented a one-to-one -one technology initiative um, in K through grade 12. Um, so this uh, fits along with our technology initiative. Um, so they can work online. They pace themselves um, with what their needs are individually. They can watch instructional videos when they have struggles. Um, there are videos online to provide them support so they can have some self-directed learning. And it allows them to practice their math skills. So how does all of this work? Well, it starts with the students going online. There are five domains um, inside this math program. There's geometry, measurement and data, um, counting. There's all the five domains that we follow with our Envision math program. What happens is the student goes in and takes a diagnostic test in each of the domains. Sometimes it could take five minutes. It may take 20 minutes, depending on the level of the student. So as they work their way through, the program designates when they are hitting a frustrational level and it cuts them off. So your lower level students may finish the diagnostic sooner than some of your higher level students. Okay, and then what happens is once they are done the diagnostic, it assigns them a level in each of those domains. And that level, when you go in and have adaptive practice for themselves, they click on whichever domain you would like them to work on or whichever one they haven't completed, and it's at a level that they are comfortable with. It's pushing them, challenging them, but again, it's not to that frustrational level, okay? So they can practice at their own pace and what works for them to master those skills. And while they're doing this, if they have some, um, some struggles, implemented inside of the program are videos to help them learn the skills that they are working on at each level. Um, and the great thing about this is this allows the students to pace themselves. Sometimes when I watch an instructional video, I can watch it in one swoop and I'm done and I have that skill. Well, this allows them, if they can't get it in one watch of the video, they can go back, they can pause the video and, and do a step-by-step -step with, the, with the video and the problem that they are trying to solve. Or they can rewatch that video four, five, or six times over again until they get that skill. There's also a great feature that um, allows the students to see which students have mastered that skill that they are working on so they can get some peer help. Um, so if Johnny's st stuck on dividing fractions and he sees, oh, Missy was really great at it, I can go ask her for help and she can help um, get the uh, concept down. And also then if they are still stuck on a level on the teacher dashboard, a warning pops up that the student is really struggling on this skill and they need some extra help or support in reteaching. So how does it work for teachers? Teachers are given a lot of feedback from this program and it's very simple to, um, to read and understand. The first thing is that you are getting real live feedback. You can see where each student is at any moment that they are working on this. Um, it gives you grade level equivalency data. What that means is when they're working through a domain, um, each domain starts in kindergarten and works its way to eighth grade. And at, what happens is as you're working your way through, it's telling you whether Johnny's at grade three or five, and even if they're in fifth grade, they can even progress outside of their grade level. So it actually allows them some enrichment opportunities as well. Uh, it also gives uh, the teachers a standard-based report card for each individual student. Um, you can use that to look at when you're filling out your own report card. You can print out that report card and share it with parents, so that way the parents are able to see where their child is. It provides lots of teaching resources. Um, there's uh, videos that you can get. There are worksheets. Um, there are extra practice problems that you can help and your students in a smaller group instruction if you would like to. It also um, gives you great grouping ideas for your students per each domain. It actually kind of sets the, domain, the groupings for you based on each skill. 
Um, so that kind of takes a little bit of that work away for the teacher. And there are lots of printables that you can um, print for the students to do um, paper and pencil practice. Um, say I wanted the kids to work on the geometry domain and I click on that, it will actually give a worksheet for each individual student based on where they are. So if you have a student working on a sixth grade level and you just click print, it's going to print um, a sixth grade worksheet for that student and you have another student working on a fourth grade level, it's going to print a fourth grade level worksheet for that student as well based on what the program sees where that student is. So how can we use this to differentiate our instruction? Well, when you're doing your adaptive practice, the students are working automatically where they are and what level they're on. So it's differentiated for them automatically. Um, it also, like I had mentioned, it gives the, kid, the teacher ideas of groupings to do with their students. Um, so you can differentiate using that, whether it's through a domain, whether it's going back reteaching, you see there are several students stuck on a certain skill. Um, it allows you to differentiate that way. And then, like I said, those worksheets, that are personalized for them. It's based on what level they are at, so that is also allowing some differentiation for the students. And then teachers, we can also create assignments for lessons that we are working on that day. So not only do you have your adaptive practice with the level that the student is on, but say today I'm working on um, converting measurements. I can go in, I can find that standard, and I can have the students work on that specific skill and get the feedback to see how they've done after I taught this lesson. Um, or it can provide some extra instructional videos to support what I had just taught in that day. So, how does this work? This works for grades kindergarten all the way up to eighth grade. It is common core aligned, which is what we have shifted towards. Um, so it's set with what we want and it is the higher level thinking problems. Um, the other great thing is we do have students who have IEPs that need things read aloud to them and when you have four or five students in your classroom that it's hard to read to all of them um, at one time and they're all in different places with this differentiated program, um, the great thing is that you can have the problems read to them. They can click on a problem at any time and the problem will be read to them and it'll also read all of the answer choices for them as well. So that helps meet the needs of, that, of the students that um, need it read aloud and can solve a problem better when it's read to you. So we don't have reading um, hindering their math skills. Um, it also provides videos to help reteach topics um, that can be viewed, again, like I was saying, at that student pace. They can watch it one time or six times. They can pause the video. That is really helpful for some of the students. Um, and like we were saying before, it's not just for reteaching. It's also for enrichment. The students are able to move and progress outside of their grade range. And with our one-to-one -one initiative that we've implemented this year with technology, the kids have access to it almost at any time. They don't have to sit and wait their turn for another student to be done with a Chromebook. Um, they can have access because they will have their own Chromebook at all times. So how does this work? What are these technology requirements? Yes, we're one-to-one, -one, but will it work with what we are using? Absolutely. It is a web-based program, so anything that has a web browser, it can work on. We're using tablets, we're using iPads, we're using Chromebooks um, in our district, and it will work on all three of those devices. Like I said, it's a web-based program, so anything that has a web browser, this program will work on. Professional development. So how do we start to learn this? Like I had mentioned before, I piloted this on my own. Um, I learned how to do it myself. It's very simple and very user-friendly. Um, they have lots of great online tutorial videos that you can use. Like if when you go in and you're setting up your class roster, on that class roster page they have embedded a video that shows you how to create your class roster. You don't have to go to a help screen and try and figure out what you're looking for and how to do. They have these online tutorials built into their program that you can watch them right there with what you are trying to do. There's also live chats that you can um, contact and speak with a team member at all times with any questions you have, you have or any concerns. Um, you can also schedule and arrange a one-on-one -on -one session with the front row team um, to help you implement um, anything that you're trying to do or any problems that you have. But like I said, I've implemented this. It's very user-friendly. It's very straightforward. Um, they also have a professional uh, development video library, so there are lots of different resources that you can use and how to um, use this, utilize this program. You can use this very, very baseline and very simple, or you can get in and use some more complex features of it. They also have webinars that you can attend um, to see how it works as well. 
So the cost. There are two different levels of cost. There's the level that I used last year that's free to teachers, where you have um, access to lots of different um, options and, access and accessibility. But then there's this other school edition version that provides extra um, access that gives a little bit more in-depth coverage for the district. So the school edition, what do you get when you upgrade to the school edition? Okay, you also will get um, student school progress. Not only will you, the, the teachers only see how each student is doing in their class. Well, this will let you see a bigger picture. This will show you school progress overall. How is the, how is the district doing? Um, how is this school doing in K to five? Is, are there, is there growth? Um, it'll show you the growth by class as well. And then there are also um, performance quartiles that will allow you um, to see a little bit more in depth um, how we are doing in each of those. It allows for vertical grouping. Some, there are some districts and some buildings that have started um, pulling kids out of third grade and going to fourth grade. It allows for some other vertical groupings with that. Um, the other thing is going to the middle school level and then there are some buildings in our elementary that are teaching more than one math class. This allows a teacher to have more than one class. In elementary, usually kindergarten, first grade, second grade, you have one class all day. When we get to the older grades, that's when you start to have multiple classes. Well, instead of having 100 kids into one class, with the school edition, you are able to break it down into each class and it makes your groupings easier um, and everything easier to um, analyze. Um, you are also allowed to share students with other teachers. Right now, if I have Johnny in my class, but he's being pulled out for, um, with a gifted support teacher, I can't share his information with the gifted support teacher. With the school edition, this allows us to um, share that information either with the gifted support teacher or um, an intervention teacher. This way we can all see the same data and make sure we're providing the best supports for, for these students. Um, the other thing that's great is this allows us, the school edition allows us to create benchmark assessments. Right now I can't do that with my teacher free edition. This gives you unlimited benchmark assessments. That way we can see and monitor that growth and collect a little bit more data to see how our students are doing. Okay, um, And it also uh, allows us to manage um, and see how much time students have actually spent on this program during the sessions. How long is it taking them to get through certain skills? You know, if, if, if Susie's taking an hour to get through you know, two problems, clearly there's something going on, whether it's a classroom management issue or whether it's an educational issue where they're struggling and I need to intervene and provide a little bit more support for that child. Um, and it also provides ongoing professional development um, for the teachers to make sure we are implementing this to the best of our ability. So that school edition, I said there was a teacher edition and a school edition. The teacher edition was free. The school edition cost is $12 per student. Do I think it's worth it? Absolutely. I, I found um, if I could take what I've done last year one step further and implement a few more useful tools, I think absolutely it is worth that $12 cost per student. Content and technology standards. Does it meet the standards that we are now teaching towards? Absolutely. It is standards based aligned. You can see every standard the student is working on at every time. You can see their progress, how they are doing in each standard. And it's also implementing that technology. We are getting them to be able to use and apply applications effectively and productively online. So my pilot experience, definitely teacher recommended. Um, I actually found this program from my new neighbor next door. She, her district uses this um, throughout their entire district. And she recommended it to me, so I thought I would test it out through my own class to see how it would go. And the growth that I saw from my students seeing how much they progressed was amazing. Not just your lower level students getting caught up to grade level, but also those higher level students progressing outside of grade level and getting um, further and further ahead, making sure everyone's making growth at all times. The activities are rigorous. They are uh, make challenging the kids. They're making them do multi-step problems. They're real life problems. They're very easy to navigate through this program. The students can, took very little instruction. The students figured, figured it out and were working their way through it very easily. There are very valuable resources. Those reteaching videos that are provided, they're from Khan Academy and some other resources. 
online that they have, all of the videos have that I have seen and the students have seen have been useful. And then also the useful how-to videos, how to use this program were extremely helpful. In the classroom, how, would, how are we going to use this? What is this going to look like in our classroom? Well, there were different ways that I used it. I used it for um, center time, for math centers, and I also used it when they were done their work, they could go onto the computer and, and continue working through their adaptive practice. There were also days where, instead of doing independent practice from the textbook, I had my students, after I taught the lesson, we would go in and I would give them a specific assignment based on that skill, and they would work online. That way I could get feedback online to see how they were doing. Um, I also pulled groupings from this data that was collected from Front Row Ed, and it allowed me to pull small group um, instruction to either reteach um, or, or help some kids progress in certain areas. And then I've also used the printables as homework uh, reviews or small group reteaching to pull the kids. Once I pulled a domain, I could group those students based on their levels, and we could use that for a reteaching group. So why Front Row? It's adaptive. It meets each student's individual need. It is not, here's what everybody's doing today, we're all doing the same thing, even though some of us are at different levels. That's not how this program works. It is adaptive for each student individually. It is Common Core aligned. It has lots and lots of practice problems and videos. And the other thing that I haven't mentioned yet is it's gamified. They earn coins with each problem they get, or they get right, or they lose coins if they get problems wrong. And the, you wouldn't expect it, but it has a like an avatar pig that they are, can buy accessories for. They have more fun finding accessories to purchase for their pig and dressing them up that I thought it was going to be too juvenile for my fifth graders, but they actually thoroughly enjoyed it and ended up comparing their avatar pigs and things like that. Um, it provides technical support for the teachers and it provides support with instructional videos for the students. Um, it provides learning resources. It provides printable resources if you ever have technology issues or maybe if you want them to do something at home and a student maybe doesn't have internet access, there are printable resources you can do as well. And then there are, it creates standard-based report cards. You can use those report cards either with conferencing with parents or you can even send them home. You can have a little bit more open communication. You can send that home so the student parents can see where each of their students are. And the other thing that's really great is you can invite students or parents to have access to see how their student is doing and they'll get a weekly report. They'll see you know, how, what domains they were working on, what progress they made, maybe what struggles they have, and they'll have access to be able to see that standard-based report card. I think it's extremely important for the parents to totally understand and see where their students are and what they're doing. I've also provided a few um, videos on how to look at entering a roster and looking at some of the student reports. Um, you will have access to those with this presentation. So, do I think this program is absolutely worth the investment of $12 per student? Absolutely. I piloted it last year, like I said, I saw amazing growth with my students. I think they've worked really hard. They enjoyed the program. It's user-friendly. Um, I do think it's something that the district would um, fully benefit from implementing into our, into our curriculum. Um, if you have any questions, I would be more than welcome to answer them.